And around the time of the First World War, your option for a semi-automatic rifle was very limited, and this cartridge right here would feed one of your better options. What's up, guys? Skippy Africanus here, and on today's Cartridge of the Week episode, we are featuring a cartridge that, uh, I had actually mentioned that I would go over, like, seven months ago and, uh, never did. The, uh, 351 WSL, or 351 Winchester Self Loader, as that is what that stands for. Now, of course, I have seen this very commonly actually called 351 SL, so either of those terms, that's what we got right here. And now, if you're a Battlefield 1 fan, uh, this is the cartridge that fed the arguably best gun on that game, the uh, M1907 SL. Uh, however, before we get into the cartridge history, we will take a quick little look at the head stamp. And for our head stamp, we have w.r.a.co. Written on the top, which stands for Winchester Repeating Arms Company, or Corporation, one of those two. And on the bottom, we have .351S.L. which is your bullet diameter, and then the S.L. stands for self-loader. Now, to understand why this specific cartridge came about, as well as the firearm chambered for it, we will have to backtrack a little bit to the Winchester model of 1903. This rifle came chambered for the proprietary 22 Winchester automatic cartridge, and did fairly okay sales-wise selling around 120,000 models for its whole 33-year production life. However, where this rifle's true importance lies is in giving Winchester a basis for a semi-automatic rifle, and when they had heard that their main competitor, Remington, was developing a semi-automatic hunting rifle, they would decide to base a more potent rifle off of their 1903 design. Now, getting a cartridge that would be potent enough for a large American game while also functioning in a straight blowback action would prove to be quite difficult. However, Winchester would would pull through, or at least kind of pull through, and release the model of 1905 and its 32 and 35 self-loading cartridges a little bit before Remington would release its Model 8. However, these two cartridges didn't really work too well with anything larger than, say, a small deer, which even that was really kind of pushing your luck. And when Remington would release its Model 8 with its way more potent chamberings, uh, that actually, you know, was capable of large game hunting, uh, Winchester's early bird advantage to the semi-automatic hunting rifle market kind of wouldn't really matter. However, they would continue to experiment with more potent cartridges, leading us to the model of 1907 with its 351 self-loader chambering. Now, this cartridge typically features a 180 grain bullet with around an 18 to 1900 feet per second travel speed. Uh, the case is also semi-rimmed, meaning that this little rim right here sticks out just a little bit. It's not perfectly flush with the rest of the case. As mentioned, the bullet diameter is a 351 diameter projectile. Now, now, while this was designed for hunting, the Model 1907 with its 351 SL chambering would also find its way into police and military use. Uh, it certainly became a favorite with the police in the United States, and in World War I, the French would be the largest users of the rifle. At least, of course, as far as actual military use is concerned. Uh, it would, of course, also find usage during the Russian Civil War, which, to be fair, typically every gun of the day tended to find its way in the Russian Civil War, because they were willing to use practically anything. Now, while this cartridge uh, certainly does not compete with, say, 5.56 or 7.62x39 uh, typical intermediate cartridges, one could certainly argue that this cartridge was one of the first intermediates to really see usage in warfare. Now, this cartridge would be surpassed by Winchester with an even more potent 401 self-loader cartridge, and uh, Winchester would stop manufacture of the cartridge in 1958, which, if you are wondering a little bit about that 401 self-loader, we got one right here. You can see he's a little bit bigger than the original 351, uh, definitely a little more potent. But anyways, as mentioned, uh, Winchester would stop producing this round in 1958, which I will say this round in particular is quite hard to find. Like, they did start randomly making it like a month or so after I found this one, uh, as well as it, it came in a pack of five. Um, as well as like when I found these five, they started making the ammo like a month after that. But I double checked and uh, those uh, are once again discontinued. So yeah, definitely a neat little cartridge. It most certainly took me some time to find. Uh, I wouldn't. I wanted just one, but uh, I got five of them now. But anyways, I think that is gonna do it for this week's Cartridge of the Week episode featuring the 351 SL. I uh, hope you all enjoyed the video as much as I personally enjoyed making it, and I will see you on the next Cartridge of the Week episode.